All right, what's happening, guys? Uh, so basically, with the seasons changing, everybody's got to change up their cooking methods. So we're gonna go over a really quick one today: uh, the reverse sear. You'd use it fundamentally on anything with like a thick cut. Um, so while we're moving indoors, we'll teach you how to do our big thick steaks cooked indoors. Everybody's got a pretty good idea how to cook them on the grill. We'll run it through the kitchen, give you an idea of how to cook a perfect steak indoors. You don't have to worry about restaurants. You can make a better one at home. So we'll kick right into that. Let's get started. All right, so this is our, uh, uh, this was open August 18th. So we're looking at 89 days of age on this guy. Um, I'll call these 60s. We're getting really close. I should be calling them 90s, but you know, good for you, good for me. Um, we're gonna start cleaning this up now. Again, H ribeye export. Uh, 80 days in the cooler, our dry age case. Uh, maintains humidity, maintains temperature within 6%, 6 degrees uh, at all times. So they're super stable, super perfect for what we're doing. It's exactly what we want. All right, so here's how it goes for cleaning these. So we just cut those bones off the back. Open up the bottom a little bit. All right, she's open. Now we can shut that down. All right, so now we're just pulling that thick skin that comes in the cooler. Just kind of tearing her down. Trying to leave as much as we can because we've already lost a lot of weight through the aging process. And I'm using a lot longer blade than you're going to want to use for this at home. Mostly because I have to display this in a meat case. So I want nice, long, pretty lines on everything. So uh, if you're doing this at home, good for you, A. B, uh, you don't have to use so long and unruly a knife. All right, we're pretty much there on this one. So maybe I'll show it next to a brand new one. This is your strip side, so that'll have a lot less fat. That'll be your nice chuck side. So this is brand new. So this is right before we do it. We'll tag this with today's date, get the weight, everything that we need to know on a tag, and we'll throw it in the cooler uh, just so we know when, where, exactly what it is and how it went in. So this is this piece of meat 30 days later. So that's 30 days difference. So that's a full 90 days in. You can see the size difference when everybody wonders, well, each steak is so expensive, this and that. This is why. This is, this is what the time does. Um, you know, not only babysitting it and watching it, but then peeling it, you're left with all this loss um, just to get to the center cut that we're looking to cook. So we pull that open. This is where the magic happens. So now we got the meat all cleaned up. We're ready to start pulling steaks from the ends. And this is that cowboy cut that you buy here. That butcher's son and coring. There we go. So now we're looking at a 90 day ribeye. That's straight off. There's still a little bit more trimming that needs to happen before we send these away. Trim down around these bones. Sorry about my big knife. Get it right in there. Peel around these bones. Peel around the backside. I leave the backside on so I got something to support it as we go. And 
that's that. You got yourself a clean, ready to eat rib steak. So that's where it comes from. Now where does it go? So just as easy as getting it ready. I've temped this out so it's down to room temperature. It's been out for about an hour and a half. You can go longer, shorter, whatever time you've got. You want to get it as close to room temperature as you can so it cooks evenly the whole time. We're just going to hit it super liberally with salt and pepper. Just stack the thing on all sides. And it looks like a ton. But most of this is going to come off through the cooking. It's going to add to your flavor. A lot's going to come out of the steak, so a lot of the salt's going to just get pushed away. So we're doing this for basically the future. Later we'll deal with that. Then this pan, just, just like that, goes right in the oven. Bring over, put it in our oven. We are set to 350 degrees. So then the next most important thing we want to work with is probes. Probes are huge, got to get them. Uh, invest in a good one. We're playing with this meter probe right now. I don't know. I just kind of opened the packaging. We're trying to figure it out. I'm testing it out. Um, we'll see how it works. It's hard to trust. You just stick that right in the back of the steak. And that'll tell us how we're cooking. Probes right in, in the oven. If you've got a remote probe, those are great too. That's what you want to work with. This is a Thermalworks smoke probe remote. Um, this is the probe I've trusted for years and years and years. You basically just throw that in. This probe sits in the oven. This you get to take in your pocket. You can go wander around, do whatever, whatever you want to do really. Have beers, forget about it for a while. So this is the probe we've been using. We're using the meter probe today just to see how it works. Uh, but probe is the most important thing to have for this. You gotta get one. Uh, that's essentially it for this part of it. We'll be about 20 minutes in there. Check our temps and uh, get right back to it. Now just to check where we're at on this guy. We're looking for just over rare. We're pulling up 125, 124 degrees, which is pretty much exactly where we want. She's going to climb to 130 as we're waiting. Uh, steak's been in there about 20 minutes now, uh, that 300 degrees. Uh, so now we rest them. So the most important part after you cook is you rest it. I'm going to grab that guy and get it off this hot pan as soon as we can and flip it over the other way. So now the juices are going to start going the opposite direction towards the inside of the meat. And then we could go with a hard sear and that's where you could get fancy. So we'll give this a little rest and we'll get right back to it and we'll start searing her. So now we've rested it. We want to keep it as close to that target temperature as we want. You see we climbed a bit, which is exactly what we're looking for. 120 is pretty blue. This will be kind of like a crowd steak. I like to eat mine, like eat them at 120 degrees. Um, this is probably more what most people are going to be looking for. About 130 degrees. We shouldn't get any more carryover once we cook it. Um, that's what we're going to get into next. So we're going to get our pan as hot as we can. I typically cook in cast iron. This is carbon steel. Carbon steel is like a restaurant equivalent of cast iron. That's what we got here today. So we're going to get our oil kind of ripping up. We'll hit that with a little butter once we get to go or we could just throw knobs of butter on our steaks. It'll all fall into the pan. Bada bing, bada boom. The aromatics will go in with it. And uh, what we're looking for is wisps, wisps of smoke coming off the oil. Um, and the steaks are gonna bring it down quite a bit. So as soon as we get that smoke start to rise, now we're getting hot, hot, hot. As hot as humanly possible. I can't stress it enough. Want all your oil the same. You can go your aromatics, your butter, and then here comes those steaks. That's that flip side. We're getting a good sear. We're gonna leave it as long as we can. So at that nice smoke temp, we'll start rolling this steak around. You want to burn it, or you want to get sear on every side.
And this is just gonna put that crust that you're looking for on your steak. So as we're cooking, as we're cooking that side, we could be basting the other side with our hot oil. This is just going to put more of that crust. It's going to get bring those aromatics in. And I'll kind of infuse it with that oil. Uh, the oil I'm using, that's really important too. Don't throw olive oil in this pan. You want to use high temperature oil, otherwise you'll smoke out really fast. Um, it won't allow you to get this like harder crust on your steak. So then again, get that steak on the dry side. Give our pan a little chef's tilt. You got somebody over to the house you want to impress. This is the move right here. I don't know what I don't know what happens from there. So now we're starting to blister our steak. She's been in long enough. So we probably seared it for about a minute and a half. So now we got our finished rib steak. Uh, this is our 80 day, 80 day dry aged ribeye. We're gonna pull that bone first. Set that aside. Get our big boy knife out. And we'll start getting the cutaways. So then we get into our finished salt. Throw it up on top. And there it is, baby. Who's better than us? Nobody, I'm about to eat this. Let's dig in, see what we get. It's totally insane. You're not going anywhere to get a steak like this. You go to restaurants, you're gonna pay out, out the ass. You come here, you get the steak, butcher son, late night, date night, anytime make these steaks happen. You know how to do it. You can't do better. Come get one anytime.